Welcome to Alex G's Aquarium, everybody. Today I want to give an update on the aquarium build, talk about everything that's been going on in the last whole month and a half. I don't even know. It's been too long since I've done an updated video. And I was just uh, making some comments on one of Aquarium Domain's videos. I asked about his big build project that he's got going on with his Predator Bay. And he, uh, he reminded me that I have not done an update video in a while, so... That's part of the reason I'm sitting in my basement tonight filming this. So thank you for the kick of encouragement to get this video filmed. I uh, also want to say a big thank you to Steve from Reef Plus in North Aurora, Illinois. He got this sheet of glass in for me. He delivered it with his assistant Trevor. Now this piece of glass did get delayed coming in. There's a lot of people ordering aquariums right now and with weather delays and shipping delays on top of that, uh, it took a little longer to get the piece of glass than we wanted, but uh, no fault to Steve. He got it in as soon as he could, and as soon as he got it in, he hand-delivered it with his assistant Trevor. Uh, removed the top beam of this aquarium so that we could just slide the piece of glass right in onto some styrofoam. As soon as we had that done, went ahead, reinstalled that beam. Once that piece was completed, I got some custom 2x4 holders over here to hold the glass just a little bit away from the front of the tank at an angle. The bottom of it was rusting on some PVC on top of the tile. And that allowed me to simply have an easy way to work on the glass and have access to its entire ceiling surface for cleaning and prep and practice. And then I went ahead and also had access to the seal surface, got that all cleaned up and prepped. And the next morning the glass was installed. So it's been a week since the glass has been installed. It hasn't fallen off yet, which obviously I think that's a good sign. And it's getting held up with some acrylic and 2x4s right now. And hopefully in a week I'll be at the point where I'm ready to start the fill test. And we'll take a few days to fill this tank up. Probably take at least two, maybe three. Uh, given that it's a pretty short tank, I don't feel uncomfortable filling it up to the 50% mark on the first day and that's going to give me some time to do some other things like get my cross braces finalized and the rest of my plumbing done as well but the tanks coming along good uh, and as I mentioned plumbing there's 160 feet of 2 inch PVC sitting next to me and two giant bags of PVC fittings along with various PVC fittings throughout the basement I've staged up so that I can get the two two inch drain lines for this tank plumbed along with some other stuff I'm going to be working on behind the tank. So the canopy for this tank is all done. It's sitting behind the tank here and I just got to have my wife help me out, lift it up on top of the tank, get the panels on, the power connected and really at that point this tank is, is going to be ready to go and as I've talked about in other videos this tank is where the majority of the fish and corals are going to get transferred to from the temporary system. Most of it's going to go in here so the light rack and stuff is going to come off of the temp tank and I'm going to have to do some cutting and modifying on it to get it to fit in here as it's just a little bit narrow for that rack. Uh, because of how it was mounted before there weren't any canopy sides at the last house so it didn't matter how long it really was. In this tank though it'll have to get shortened up just a bit. Overall this tank's looking good. Let's talk about the next part of this project. Please don't mind the mess. This is my workbench. It gets a little cluttered at times. I'm sorry. I, don't ask how I cut pieces of wood. It just involves clearing a small trench through this. Uh, this is what happens when you make a makeshift workbench. Uh, Getting serious on this though, the 150 gallon aquarium, it's filled up, it's ready to go, it's normally running right now, I've shut the pumps off just because it's got a lot of noise back here and until I get all the sumps up to the proper levels and things tuned right, there's just going to be too much noise back here to film. But uh, this tank's running, uh, I had to re-level it once. Uh, on the initial level it was just slightly tipping towards the drain side a bit. Luckily there was no twisting action in the tank and after I drained it off because uh, I needed the water for another tank I went ahead and, and re-leveled it. I also did one other thing to the tank itself. Now this is 
experimental slash peace of mind for me. I did something I'm going to just coin reverse armor cornering on the glass. I took quarter inch thick glass, two inches wide, and I overlapped the seams on the glass corners here. All four of the corners have had a two inch piece of glass applied to them with some RTB and spacers on them. Now the reason that I did this, it is an older tank, it is a used tank, not the original owner of it. Ever since I've had it, there have been some little bubbles and variations in the silicone seal. It's been that way since I've owned the tank. Nothing moves, nothing can shift. I pushed on the glass panels and they don't move. So the seal's in pretty good shape. I just want a little extra peace of mind. It's one of those things where I want to try this out, see if it just gives me that peace of mind or if, you know, we have a problem later on down the road. Uh, it is a very tall tank at 30 inches too, so it, it won't hurt it. This isn't about uh, the visual appeal here, so I know they're kind of ugly sitting here on the side, but hey, so is the 2x4 that's sitting there for the canopy. Uh, but this is just experimental and just a peace of mind thing for me as I'm going to be doing something similar in my display tank and I figured this would give me a little bit of practice. So that's what I've done with this tank. As far as the rest of it goes, the canopy is a little different than the style I went with last time. I made it a lot taller. I wanted to be able to get you know my head under here and also camera equipment because I really want to make this a dedicated mantis shrimp tank eventually to really observe the behavior of a mantis shrimp or somatopods you got to be able to capture them from different angles and the front on view is always great but sometimes that top down view is very interesting as well to see different angles for how they are looking at something or stalking prey so I think it'll be very interesting to get that multi-perspective view. So this higher canopy will get, allow me to get some camera equipment in here. And I've also gone ahead and, it's, uh, and changed how it's supported. The canopy is actually tied into the stand and going directly to the floor this time. The last canopy sat on top of the tank and its full weight was up there. And I just didn't want to do that this time around. It limited my options, especially if there is something that happens to this tank. I could slide it off the stand here with some removal of plumbing. So I've got a Lumilite Pro LED strip that's on here. It's the same one that was lighting my 700 gallon tank before. I've turned it down a, a few notches so it's not ultra bright as it doesn't need to be right now. There's just fresh water in the tanks. And one fun fact about this tank is that the drain line on it is the longest drain line to date that I've ever made. It's 50 feet of inch and a half PVC. It literally snakes around the entire basement to get to the 265 gallon sump. And it's, it, was, it was very interesting to make the whole thing. And I, I really sat there and I was like, I really hope this works. I've never made a drain line this long. But so far, it, it seems like it's working pretty good and don't have a lot of gurgling or rushing with it. It seems to be pretty stable. And the return line is just a one inch line that's running overhead. We'll show that here in a few minutes. And other than that, the water storage tanks behind me have been working good. The second tank was plumbed in line. I did have to do a little just adjustment on where the tank was sitting on the stand after I filled it up. I realized I had bumped it back a little and had to pull it forward. And I got a replacement lid for that tank, which it was just really bothering me that I lost that lid when I moved. I know I had it because I physically held it in my hand when I removed it. And I could have sworn I put it in a box. I spent probably a couple hours looking for that stupid lid. And I was like, I can't keep doing this. I just order a replacement. So that came in. Everything's good there. The 265 gallon tank has gotten a lot further along than I ever thought it would in this amount of time. This looks totally different from the last time I did an update video. I started off by cleaning the tank out a little bit more. I got the skimmer cleaned out a bit. I sprayed the inside out with some citric acid. I built up a shelf and a board on the side and the back similar to what I did for the last build although I extended it 
up a lot higher over here and it'll allow me to mount uh, electronics, pump controllers, the apex on both sides of this board which will be very nice. I'll still have the shelf for my calcium reactor like I did before and I'll have another whole board here to fill up with pump controllers, power supplies, whatever needs to get mounted back here. The not, one nice thing I want to say about this is I salvaged a lot of wood and materials from my last build. I kept all the stands, but I used all the old 2x4s. And uh, Actually, this is a piece of my walking platform plywood here that's for this back mount wall. So it was nice to be able to reuse some materials for this and you know not have to spend more money to buy more materials. Overall, it turned out good. Once I got that piece done, I started moving on to getting the 150 gallon plumbed in, the UV sterilizer plumbed in. With the UV sterilizer, I went ahead and put it in the same place that it was before for the most part. It's raised up a little bit in case I have to do skimmer maintenance and pull the entire thing out as I had to do at least once before on the old build. But the nice thing is that it's set up in a way it can't run dry Yes, some detritus and debris will get stuck in it, but that can be easily washed out with its regular maintenance cleanings. So the UV didn't need a whole lot of modification of the plumbing, a couple of couplings, and that was basically it. Now it's plumbed into the same pump feeding the 150, which is exactly how I had it before. In the last build, the pump that I put on there, it's a JVO DCP 10,000. It's got more than enough power to push the water through the UV and to that 150 gallon tank. I also added a five gallon bucket fill right here, which I gotta say, this is just a great tool to have. If you're doing a monster build or any build that you got a fish room or something where you're gonna have to put water into buckets or containers from time to time, seriously consider putting one of these in it's so nice to have because you could you don't have to worry about dipping a bucket or removing tops you just turn a valve fill up some water and you got it on hand with the plumbing done on here i got bulkheads installed there's a couple old two inches that were from the old build that i left in place i kept them on the outside just in case i ever need them and also so i could watch them because if they do have a leak, it would be very easy to service that here as opposed to the back of the sump, which is going to just be a lot of plumbing when it is all said and done. The other bulkhead I put in on the side of this tank is a Hayward 4-inch, which is going to be my new interconnect bulkhead. This is going to go to my secondary sump that isn't built yet. Uh, it's a thread thread which I know some people are probably cringing hearing that with a bulkhead going, ew, thread, thread, why would you want that? Why didn't you just go slip? Well, a couple reasons. Uh, one, these are very expensive. And <laughs> two, if you silicone in your fittings and don't use Teflon tape or Teflon paste, it's not going to leak. Now, I learned that trick a long time ago, and I, I'll still stand by it today because it, it works. Uh, so this is the mate to that bulkhead. Eventually there'll be a four inch drain line interconnecting. I'm sure one of the questions everyone's asking is why go with a four inch? Why not just use a bunch of two inches? To make the equivalent of a single four inch line, technically I'd need to get five two inch lines, which means I'd need ten two inch bulkheads, which takes up a lot of space and it's a lot more expensive than just buying two of these. So that's why I went with it. And I, I'm just going to say it right now, I really want to see the snail that's going to clog this thing up. Uh, short of a conch or some giant troca snail, nothing's going to clog this line up. Once bulkheads were in, I got the radiant heating system online. I'm still using my same Renko controller, although I did swap out the temp probe. And this time I submersed it inside of silicone inside a vinyl tube. The temp probes really aren't supposed to be exposed directly to seawater, as I've, I've seen numerous people on Reef to Reef say, but, you know, I had my old one in the tank for three years, never had a problem, but, hey, maybe I just got lucky. I haven't done a full-scale test on the radiant heating system. I'm ready to do one uh, now that I've got a couple other things together in this system, but for right now, uh, I'm just going to leave it off. 
is I just don't want to spend the energy on it. Probably in the next week or so, that system will get turned on and fully tested. Once I had uh, all these things done in this tank, it was really tempting to fill it up right away. But I ultimately ended up kind of hitting pause because I had another big project that I'll talk about in a minute over here. Uh, but once I finished that project over there, I went ahead, I got all the pumps and plumbing, uh, even if it wasn't going to be fully plumbed out, just the start of returns and drain lines so that I could cut the lids, get them to the right size, and then ultimately go in and do a fill test. The first fill test on this tank didn't go so well. The four inch bulkhead ended up leaking. Wasn't a really bad leak, but that wasn't something that could be tolerated. It was a steady stream of water. That's what led me to filling up my 150 gallon the first time. So I did a 50% fill test on it because this tank had a leak and I needed to put the water somewhere and I really didn't want to pump it back into the storage tanks that are just for clean RODI water. I ended up siliconing in the four inch bulkhead, which I probably should have done in the first place. And I know someone's gonna go out there and say you shouldn't silicone bulkheads in. Well, here's why you do it and when you do it. For glass or acrylic, something that's a flat surface, you should not need to put in an extra sealant, such as silicone. Because they're flat surfaces, you should be able to obtain that seal with a bulkhead without a problem. But HDB E tanks are not a smooth surface. They have wrinkles, they have imperfections, and unfortunately, sometimes it can be very challenging to get a bulkhead to properly seal. Now with the right amount of silicone applied, which is not to overkill it, you still need to make that gasket press against everything. As long as it doesn't form a void where it won't allow the bulkhead to compress properly, you're okay. So I siliconed it in, next day filled the tank, hasn't leaked since. So it was a challenge tightening it and I had to make a really funky looking wrench out of two by fours that I don't want to share because it's very ugly. Okay, I changed my mind. Uh, this is the, the wrench for the four inch bulkhead. So don't laugh at me. I made this thing very impromptu when I was first installing this bulkhead because uh, I found that it's pretty hard to tighten up a four inch bulkhead uh, hand tight. Yeah, it doesn't apply to stuff this big. You don't need to tighten it a lot because there's not a whole lot to compress, but yeah, this came in handy after it leaked and, and sealing it up too. If I was going to do this properly, I'd probably get uh, some three quarter inch plywood and the router and actually make a wrench, which maybe I'll end up doing in the future. We'll see, but eh, for right now, improvised. Now, after I got that leak fixed. The fill test was to fill this tank up all the way to the very top. Sat there for over a week and didn't have any problems with any of the plumbing. Once the 150 was ready to go, I got that all plumbed in, the drain. So once the 150 uh, was all cleared to go, I went ahead, filled it up to capacity and had it running. I did that right after I got my big project here done. Now let's go ahead and talk about that as this tank is just going to have more and more stuff added onto it as the build progresses. Next part of the build I want to talk about is the 700. This tank right now is filled up with water. It's got the one of the refugium lights that will be on here. I, I put my old grow light on here just so that I can have something. Haven't cleaned the glass, haven't tried to pretty up the front of the tank yet as it's still in testing mode. Now, originally, the plan was not to build this tank until the 400, the 265, and the 150 were all running, and I had transferred all the inhabitants from the temp tank into the 400. Well, after I broke that glass, I had a few decisions to make. One, I was going to run out of things to do very quickly with this 265, and I didn't want to just sit here twiddling my thumbs. I decided to move forward and build the 700. Another thing I wasn't going to initially do was make this a pond liner tank. I really wanted to test out the pond liner on the 400 and get a little confidence built up before I went with the 700, which, you know, 
you know, it's, it's a 36 inch tall tank. It's probably got closer to 34 inches of water in it. This is a lot different type of build than that one is in terms of water pressure. And I really wanted to test that seal method on the 400 before I went here, but I decided to say, let's take a chance. I bought a pond liner for it. And this tank went together pretty easily. I already had the stand. I already had the bracing for the sides from the old tank. I already had the glass. All I needed to do was build a new front frame, which is a tripled up uh, two by four beam that's all uh, screwed together in various perpendicular patterns and also screwed into the bracing sides and the stand. The bracing sides, I removed all the old L brackets I had on there from the old build where I reinforced the plywood tank. Because that plywood tank was a little bit bigger, the bracing sticks out an inch and a half on each side of the front. And it also kind of overlaps slightly in the back because it was just a little bit larger and it wasn't worth it to do all that work to modify it uh, because the structure of that bracing is sound. And it actually gave me a few more attachment points with L brackets to tie the this new front frame in to the side bracing. So worked out perfectly. Once I had all of that stuff completed, I plywood skinned the inside. I went with a new cross bracing system, which I built on the 400 but hadn't tested yet, which it's threaded rods uh, that are 3 8 threaded rods with uh, double locking nylon nuts on each side. There's an aluminum plate behind here and a washer to help spread that force out into this beam. And on the inside of the tank, I had countersunk some holes to accommodate half inch PVC, which gets butted up against the pond liner and then gets some silicone on it to seal it up. So the threaded rod in here should not get exposed to salt water. And I say should not get exposed. It's experimental. In a few months, I'll probably pull one of these out, inspect it, and make sure it's looking okay. As long as this is working good for this tank, I'm going to go ahead and do the same method on my main display tank when I build it. So I got all that stuff done with the the plywood skin. I built a canopy for it. Uh, I had to disassemble it, take it down though. Before I put the pond liner in, I had to get this glass out and get it off the old plywood tank that was just like the 400 when I broke it. So I was a little nervous about this glass and breaking it since I shattered the last piece. It, it kind of is a little bit of a confidence wrecker. But I ended up uh, thinking about a couple of things with this based on the fact that I shattered the last piece. And one of them was, how do I minimize handling this glass so that I can't do that very easily? I came up with a solution that was going to help me in two ways. Because not only did I have to clean the glass off, I had to get it in here. The way that I solved the cleaning of the glass problem also solved my how to get it into the tank problem and relieved me from some very challenging things that would have been high risk for breaking this glass. The biggest one being installation of the glass. This piece of glass is three quarters of an inch thick. It's just under eight feet long and it's just under three feet tall. Weighs somewhere between 300 and 350 pounds. To try and lift this piece of glass over the top would have been challenging and dangerous because you gotta lift it over your head. If it breaks, you're gonna have that full weight of shards of glass coming down on you or whoever else is helping you. I didn't wanna do that, so I decided right up front is that this top beam will be removable. So what I'll do is I'll get the sheet of glass ready when it's all cleaned up, I'll put the pond liner in, and then I'll remove this beam so the pond liner is just hanging. Then we'll shimmy the glass in, put it on some styrofoam, work it in, put the beam back, and I'll be done. Well, it worked. Before I even cut the plywood off the sheet of glass from the old tank, I built a custom 2x4 stand that would allow me to hold the glass up vertically so it could be cleaned and all the plywood cut off, all the old RTV cut off, 
but I made the stand just a little bit higher than the lip of this tank on the bottom. So when I was done, I could just push that whole uh, glass holder right up to the tank and just slide the glass in, and it worked perfectly. My wife came down, helped me out. All she had to do was steady the piece of glass so it didn't tip over as I was moving to, to kind of rearrange myself. Got the glass in. Next day, it was sealed in place. This one sat for two weeks to allow the RTV 108 time to cure. Uh, I've done a little bit of a job. I still have some left here. You can still see painter's tape probably. Uh, there's still some art, excess RTV I gotta cut away. And I need to put uh, some FRP board as a facade for this because just seeing the sliced up pond liner and uh, underlayment for the pond liner, it's just not very visually appealing. So that'll get changed. And the glass was all set up. The plumbing was led up all the way to the tank, but I did not install the bulkheads on the tank and I did not install the cross bracing on the tank. I ended up doing uh, a one third fill. At one third, I went ahead and tensioned up the pond liner in the back so that it was just going to lay flat. I wasn't stretching it, just pulling it to where it wouldn't have wrinkles in it, which did a pretty good job with. And then I put my cross bracing in. Once the cross bracing was in, then I filled it up to two thirds and then I just tensioned out the pond liner to get the bulkheads in here as well. I wanted the pond liner in that place to be as flat as I could. Worked out pretty good. Those got siliconed in. Uh, I did a thorough cleaning of the pond liner and then the bulkheads went in. Now my main points of concern here for leaks are obviously the seal on the glass and the bulkhead fittings. I'm 11 days into it at this point. Nothing has happened yet, but I don't consider this successful yet. It's going to have to be several months before I start to get more comfortable with this uh, because you just never know how things are going to happen over time. Uh, but the tank's filled. It runs. Uh, I'm just off right now for sound. And that is the main part of the tanks. I do have one other thing I do want to share, though. The final thing I want to share today is that the next piece of my humidity mitigation system is in, and that is my dehumidifier. So this is a whole house dehumidifier. It's not just a little wheeled one. Uh, I had my old one here still, and the poor thing was struggling already in here with the 700, the 265, and the 150 running. The containment of the moisture with the plastified ceiling has made the humidity in this space go up pretty dramatically pretty quick with all this open water flowing already. So this is a ducted dehumidifier. It can't have ducting on it. And what I'm eventually going to do is I'm going to put in ducts to the 700, the 400, and the main display tank to pull air out of those canopies and through this dehumidifier. More than likely what I'm going to do is once I have everything ducted with the 400, the 700, and the main display, is the exhaust of this dehumidifier, which is a warmer air and drier air, I'm going to likely duct it to be blown out into the main basement, which will help create a negative pressure in this room. It will also help and encourage airflow through the canopy of the main display back into this room as well. So this thing, I will say, is a beast. When I started this up, my humidity was starting to get into a little bit of a scary position where I was starting to hit the 60s and the little dehumidifier I had just really wasn't cutting it in here. I turned this thing on. It was like the first day I got it. I turned it on. It took the humidity down in this room, which is 700 square feet from it was reading 61% down to 42% in less than an hour. So the thing's a beast. It does a good job, and I can't believe how quickly when I turned it on, I started seeing water flowing out of it. I just had a vinyl tube at the beginning, but I've gone ahead and I've just left a little section of vinyl so I know I can visually check to see that it's working. And it's just been PC, PVC plumbed into the floor drain over here. But this thing's working great. It's not overly loud, and it's a, a fairly energy efficient model. It's rated for like a 5,300 square foot home, and I figure I'm not even close to that between my upper floor and my basement. I'm not, not even close to it. We'll see how it runs. 
Uh, obviously, with humidity control, this might not be the only thing necessary. I do have another option to put ventilation in where I just blow humid air outside. I have not dismissed that. I'm just not going to do that from the start this time around. That will be more of a, if I have to do it, I'll do it later on type of thing. So that's the update for today. I know it was a ridiculously long update. If you're still awake or watching, thank you. Uh, I really hope that you got something valuable out of it. Of course, if you got comments or questions, go ahead and leave them down below. I'm going to try, really try to do more update videos if I can. I think now that I'm getting a lot of this stuff done, I've just been in hyperdrive trying to get things moving because I'm getting so close. I'm hoping in the next couple of months here we got salt water and a tank transfer completed. Uh, that'll depend on a few things though and that'll probably be in the next video that I'm talking about is things that I got to do before I add salt to this tank. If you want to see more frequent updates tune in to Reef Girls live streams. I'm a frequent visitor there to talk about updates and just talk about aquariums in general, have a laugh. Uh, discuss interesting aquarium topics. If you can't make it on Saturday nights, uh, Reef Girl has been throwing some live streams out. I think it's once a month right now where she's doing a, an international live stream where she's doing it on Sunday and an earlier hour to be able to catch people from other time zones and other continents to, to join in. That's the video for today. Thanks again for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next video.